Welcome to this edition of the Bill Black Report. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Bill Black is an associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's a white collar criminologist and former financial regulator. He's the author of The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. He's joining us from Quito, Ecuador today. Thank you so much for joining us, Bill. Thank you. So, Bill, you have an update or a fourth edition of your series that you've been writing on Citibank whistleblowers. Tell us what you have. Okay, so there is some good news in life. The only reason that the uh, Justice Department has been able to bring even these pathetic civil cases uh, in which they, uh, with one exception, uh, sue only the company and get um, uh, fines relative to the size of the bank uh, that don't matter. Um, within each case of the big, the giant U.S. banks uh, made possible by whistleblower. So in the Citigroup case, uh, it was made possible by Richard Bowen uh, and Sherry Hunt, who were colleagues as underwriters, the people designed to make the loan, sure the loans are done safely. And the case of J.P. Morgan, Elaine Fleischman, and the case of Bank of America, Edward O'Donnell. So what happened? Um, well, it turns out that Richard Bowen and Sherry Hunt were able to document uh, originally when they looked, 40 to 60 percent of the representations and warranties that Citigroup was giving Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to buy these toxic mortgages were false. Imagine that, 40 to 60 percent of the time they were lying. And so they, Richard Bowen uh, and Sherry Hunt, blew the whistle all the way up to the chain at Citigroup, including to Robert Rubin in writing. Uh, and, and Robert Rubin by, being? Robert Rubin was former Treasury Secretary under uh, President Clinton. He was uh, would soon become chairman of the board of Citigroup. Uh, he is the um, leader of the Wall Street wing of the Democratic Party. Um, and he, he said uh, to the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission, I have no idea what we did in response, and I don't know who did anything in response, but I heard back that we did great things. So what did they actually do? Well, first, they didn't fix the problems, they made it worse. So that by 2007, when uh, Bowen and Hunt are uh, looking again, the rate at which uh, Citi is lying uh, to Fannie and Freddie is up to 80%, right? And the next thing, of course, that uh, uh, Rubin was sure that uh, Citicorp was doing the right thing is both uh, Bowen and Hunt were retaliated against. Bowen was a big deal, uh, senior vice president, staff of 220. One of his principal lieutenants was Sherry Hunt. Uh, he was reduced to uh, two people uh, reporting to him, and Sherry Hunt was reduced to one person uh, reporting to them. So that's what you get when you do the right thing. Now, they gave the Department of Justice the ideal criminal case on a platinum platter against the most elite uh, leaders, including Robert Rubin uh, at Citigroup, and the Justice Department refused to do anything. But Sherry Hunt's a lot of fun. So first she gets retaliated against in late 2006, early 2007. But she stays uh, at Citigroup and she starts keeping notes and documents and emails. And uh, Citigroup does it again, except now it targets the entity, the federal governmental aid agency designed to help bail out the banks like Citigroup, which was insolvent because of all of its frauds, right? At one point, we actually owned 33% uh, of it. And so we used the Federal Housing Administration, the FHA, its um, insurance guarantee program to ensure that there was a flow of credit to the banks uh, even with the collapse of the secondary market in mid-2007, the 2008 uh, financial disaster, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
city, instead of top executives, instead of being grateful, A, of course, goosed their uh, executive compensation, but B, decided, hey, let's target FHA, now that Fannie and Freddie are out of it, for our frauds. And uh, Ms. Hunt documented carefully how they did this, how they threatened her, that her ass was on the line, how they gave orders to use brute force uh, to make the problems in the loans they were getting the guarantees from FHA uh, disappear. And she again gave this to the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Department of Justice, and they did nothing. So she brought a False Claims Act, and the complaint was so good that even the Justice Department felt uh, compelled to uh, intervene and bring this case. Citigroup um, not only settled, but settled saying, yes, we uh, you know, did bad things in all of this. Again, no prosecution, and here's the wonderful bottom line. So they're going to do the press conference, right? The uh, U.S. Attorney's Office uh, in Manhattan. And it does mention that there's a whistleblower suit and that they uh, joined, they, the Justice Department joined that suit, but never bothers to mention the whistleblower's name. And then in the last paragraph, uh, the Justice Department says, we want to really thank the uh, HUD, which runs FHA, the Housing Urban Development uh, Agency, for their uh, just extraordinary assistance to us. But not a word of thanks to Ms. Hunt, who made it all possible, who gave it to the FHA and the Justice Department on a platinum uh, platter, and who lost her job as a result uh, of all of this. Uh, but uh, the good news is that the case was so compelling that um, you have to net out attorney's fees and expenses and such. Uh, but she got a $32 million award uh, under the False Claims Act for helping to recover hundreds of millions of dollars from the frauds at Citigroup. But seven years, coming on seven years past the peak of the crisis, and the Justice Department is still batting zero, zero, zero against the elite frauds who caused the crisis in terms of uh, prosecutions. Bill, thank you so much for the series on uh, whistleblowers at uh, Citibank. And just goes to tell you the value of that uh, in our society to have whistleblowers. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank the whistleblowers. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.